Hi y'all, it's me. I'm here to share some information with you for your Epson Echo Tank. It doesn't matter what model number, um, but I'm going to show you how I achieve the best print quality that I can and also the paper that I use. Um, just so you can um, see how I achieve the look I achieve with my digitals. I've helped a lot of our friends find their proper setting and now they're all in love with their digital printing all over again because they're getting these excellent copies out of it or prints I should say. Um, anyhow, uh, with that said, I need you to know that in order to do this, you need to make sure that the drivers on your device are updated and that you have the Epson printer uh, program put into that device, whether it be a laptop, a desktop, um, or an iPad, or however it is that you do your digitals. You need to make sure that that's done. We have found in my helping other people that had they didn't have the right uh, drivers installed or updated, so they weren't finding the windows that I'm gonna share with you. So if you're having that same problem, that's gonna probably be the first thing to look at is to update those drivers and make sure that that printing program is in your pro uh, device. So, I'm also going to discuss with you the papers and I will discuss with you a couple of other things that you need to remember when you're printing digitals. I use my printer solely for printing digitals. I don't use it for, you know, a receipt that I want to have printed or any other thing. I have another printer for that. So my setting always stays on the best quality. However, if you use your device to print other things, then you have to be sure that each time you go to print that item, that you not only have the setting chosen on your uh, your device, but you also want to make sure it coordinates with what's on your printer. So let's get started. We're going to start over here in the search box and we're going to click on it and look for printers and scanners. And that's mine right there. So I'm going to click that. It brings you to this window. And now I'm going to search for my printer, which happens to be the Ecotank 2720. You'll find your number, and when you do, you click on it. Now you have this window. It's talking all about that printer. So when you scroll down, you're going to see Printing Preferences. You want to go ahead and click that, and that will open another window. And this is the window you should see. As you can see, my setting is already on the best quality printing. I've named mine Knitwit, and I will explain to you how to get that done. But that I know is always going to be my setting because that's where I always keep it. But if you look here, you'll notice there's fast, standard quality, um, high quality, I don't know what two up is, grayscale, and then my private setting. Um, when you're printing something like a receipt from a, a purchase or something, you might want to just choose the fast setting. It's just a really quick, uses the less, less amount of ink, and it works just well for that. Um, and then you can figure out the others as you go along. But let's set yours up for your best quality printing for your digitals. We're going to come over here to the right, and we want to be sure that this is correct. It's letter. The orientation at this point doesn't matter. What does matter is um, that you want to make sure that your paper, oops, sorry, your paper is on the best setting that you're going to have. For me, I either use one of two papers. I use a presentation matte paper or I use a presentation matte photo paper. It doesn't matter which of those you use as long as you select presentation paper matte. If you do that, you should be fine. Next, after you've done that, you just want to make sure everything kind of looks the same as mine. You're going to come up here where it says more options and you're going to go ahead and click more options. Now it has changed to this screen. On this screen, you want to be sure to click custom. It'll probably be automatic, but you want to move it to custom. And then this box will allow you to click on it. And you're going to click the advanced. And now it brings you to a screen that looks like this. You might see a color wheel on it. It could look like all sorts of things. Um, you're going to come over to your uh, saturation setting which is this one and you're going to slide that blue arrow all the way to the right which should be 25 which mine is already set 
but it doesn't matter because I'm doing a new one. So when you get here, just hold your control and slide it over to wherever you need it to be. I'm going to move that one back to zero. Once you have this one to 25, that's the only change you need to make here. And you also need to make sure that it reads Epson Vivid in this color mode area. You're going to say OK. You're going to come back up here where it says Add and Remove a Program. And now this window opens, and up here you'll see it says Name. So we're going to call this one, just for the sake of this video, Best Color. Now I know that anytime I come in here and I go to do any kind of printing, if it's for digitals, I want to choose best color. Once you type in the name there, you can put a little comment like whatever you want. I don't figure that's necessary because I already know what it is. Um, and then you're going to hit the save button right here. Make sure you hit the save button or this is not going to work for you. Once you hit the save button, You'll see, if you look here, it says best color. Now I know that anytime I come in here and I want to print a digital, all I have to be sure is that this is highlighted. And then I can get my best color. Then you just close it out, and you close it out, and you close it out. And that is basically how you're going to get your best printing quality on an Epson Echo Tank. I have a document open here that's a Word, and I'm going to just show you what other way this can be accessed. In a Word document, when you have your image and you hit File to print it, you hit the Print, you're going to get this screen. And this one allows you actually to hit Printing Properties, and you can automatically come in here, choose Best Color, and say OK, and then continue to print your document. Some programs don't allow you that extension. So when you come into your computer, the first thing you're going to have to do, if you're going to do your, if you have your uh, printer for multiple printing purposes, is you're going to go to your printer scanner, you're going to pick your model, you're going to go to printing preferences, you're going to make sure that the best color is chosen, hit OK, and it will stay there until you change it the next time. So that's all you need to remember to do. And that's how you should get your best print quality. For printing, I use this paper right here. This is Canon's Photo Mat. For the value, I think it's very much worth it. You get 50 sheets for usually under $6. If you see that it's more on Amazon, just wait because it will go on sale. It always does. And that's when you want to buy it. Um, this is a single-sided print, which means you can only print on one side of this. However, I have used it to print double-sided. Only the image that I place on the back part, the part that you're not supposed to print on, it will be, uh, uh, the color tones won't be exact. So I choose an all-over soft pattern, and that kind of helps. So that if you have, like, say you're printing ephemera, and you want to have something on the back, you don't just want it to be white, you could do that and get away with it. Also know that when you open this paper pack, you'll see that there's, um, a very bright white side and a slightly side that's yellow. And if you compare one to the other, you'll see which is which. You want to print on the brightest side, not the yellow side, unless you're doing that background thing that I mentioned just previously. Um, so that's what I use for that. And if I want to do a double-sided, hold on, let me get that box here. I use this Epson presentation mat. And if you notice, this says double-sided. So that means you can print on both sides and you're going to get excellent quality on both sides. I tend to not use this as much because usually I'm gluing down the digital onto something and I don't need the back to be seen. But if you do, that's your option there. That one runs about $7 for 50 sheets on Amazon. And again, wait for it to go on sale before you purchase it. I know a lot of you like to use the Nina or other Walmart 110 pound cardstock to do the, your printing, but you're not going to get your best quality on that paper. It's too porous and it absorbs the ink in too much and it doesn't give the best colors. So if you're having that issue, that's probably one of the problems. So any type of photo mat paper you choose to use, whatever brand, it's fine. It doesn't have to be these two. This is just 
what I have discovered that works for me over time, and I've been printing digital for quite a while now, and um, I think I'm very happy with the quality of my prints. So if that helps you, I'm hoping, because um, I get asked often how to do this, so I figured now's the time to get this video up there. But if you have any questions, oh, and one other thing before I go, um, whenever you're going to print, make sure your printer matches whatever you're printing. For example, if you're doing a fast quality print, um, you don't need presentation matte paper. You need just plain white paper. So you want to be sure that your setting on your printer is chosen for the um, plain white paper. Otherwise, um, when you press your print button, wherever you press that, it won't start right away. You're going to have to physically get up and go to your printer and say, it's okay, it's okay to change the paper quality because by then it's already, you know, ready to print. Um, so you want to make sure they match every time. If you're doing your digitals, make sure it says presentation mat on your printer and you should have the best quality prints that you've had. So like I said, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I'll try to answer what I can. I'm not a computer whiz, but I did know how to figure this out to get it to work for me. And I hope it'll work for you too. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, do what makes you happy. Bye for now.